What do you do when your mother, your family member, goes missing without a trace? How do you get law enforcement to really understand how dire it is to find this woman? Why are so many people just labeled missing persons and it's not considered a crime? Families become sad, they cry, they're desperate. They make social media posts and web pages and searches and foot searches to no avail. How do you get the world to help your story come alive? Because to you, your family member is the most important thing. And sometimes it seems to law enforcement that you're just another missing person. Where does the tide change? Is it after a week, after a month, six months, a year? Do people really just play Gone Girl? I don't believe that really happens that often. We're gonna talk about a new case today that I came across, and it seems that they are trying to get social media, YouTubers, and others that follow true crime to get a little more involved and spread the word. Mother of four, grandmother of three, missing from Missouri since May of 2020, Mother's Day, the same day that Suzanne Morphew went missing. Echo Lloyd has been missing since then. And we are now heading into the dead of winter and she has not been found. But the story does have some twists and some interesting points. So welcome to Left Undone, Incomplete Investigations. I'm Catherine. Let's talk about Echo Lloyd. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. Echo Lloyd is a 48-year-old mother of four, grandmother of three. Brand new grandchildren, too. She's been missing since Mother's Day, May 10th, 2020. Same day as Suzanne Morphew went missing, coincidentally. Her and her husband were separated, and she was living on her own, but her daughter says they were not going through a divorce, and the daughter, Kelsey, says that her stepdad, she has no reason to believe that her stepfather would have anything to do with the disappearance of her mother and that they loved each other. But she is described by her daughter, Kelsey Smith, as someone that means so much to so many people. Law enforcement calls her a missing person. The family Just says a it's foul play. Player. This is a real person and we love her and we want her home. We want her home. A desperate plea from a Missouri family to help find their missing cousin. Echo Lloyd was last seen two months ago today in Climax Springs. Andrew Avranik spoke to her cousin in Bates County and joined us live with more on this call for help. Andrew? Lisa, Echo Lloyd was last seen on Mother's Day. That was May 10th. She was last seen at a Dollar General in Climax Springs. Her daughter, her brother, and her cousins haven't heard from or seen her since. They think someone out there knows what happened to her. It's been a hard two months for Mary Dubray and her family. It's been devastating. Dubray's cousin, Echo Lloyd, has been missing since Mother's Day. She was last seen at the Dollar General in Climax Springs. That is the last time we believe she was seen or heard from. Lloyd hasn't used her cell phone, credit cards, or filled prescriptions since her disappearance. She's on several medications uh, that she does not have with her, and nor does she have her uh, billfold or her car. Um, she is absolutely missing without a trace. The Benton County Sheriff's Office is investigating. They are getting help from the Missouri State Highway Patrol and the FBI. We don't feel that she you know, decided to leave her life or is gone of her own free will. Uh, we feel, as the family, um, we feel like there is definitely foul play involved. Dubray, her sister, and Lloyd's daughter, Kelsey Smith, have set up a Facebook page to try and spread the word about Lloyd in hopes someone knows something. 
we want to get her face in front of as many people as we can so that someone um, can recognize her and say, oh, I know what happened. I'm going to help these people find their loved one. Dubray said her family isn't giving up hope, even though there are moments when doubt starts to set in. When you lose someone that you love and you know how and why, it's devastating. But when you lose someone that you love and you don't know why, and you don't know where they are, and you don't know what happened, it's a wound that won't heal. And it's really, really hard to move past that. If you have any information that can help investigators in this case, you're asked to call the Benton County Sheriff's Office or the State Highway Patrol. We've posted both of their phone numbers on our website this evening. We've also included a detailed description of Echo Lloyd, as well as a link to their Bring Echo Home Facebook page in this article on our website and news app. Reporting live tonight in Butler, Andrew Havranek, KY3 from News. Edwards, Missouri. She lived near the intersection of Stag Road and Fourth View Road. After researching and reading up on the interviews that Kelsey, Echo's daughter, had, this is the story. Mom is a very bubbly personality, down to earth, kind to everyone, beautiful inside and out, says Kelsey. So let's talk about the details. Trisha from Web Sleuths did interview Kelsey on November 7th. The link is in the description below as well as Gray Hughes. He has interviewed her as well, and the link is in the description below. In the interview with Trisha, Kelsey says, about two weeks before Mother's Day weekend, Echo came over to Kelsey's house, and she was upset. She was frightened. A male neighbor was said to be bothersome, taking over Echo's house, keys, car, etc. She was upset and Kelsey and Echo decided that they were going to go confront this neighbor the next day. Echo intended on spending the night with Kelsey because she was upset about what was going on with this neighbor. She said that to, she made it sound to Kelsey like the neighbor was taking over her stuff, her car keys, her house, and Echo was really upset about it, and so they were going to go confront this neighbor. She said they talked for hours about this, and Echo did seem frightened to her daughter Kelsey. But Kelsey says she was taken, a, she was taken back a little bit after this because what happened after that, after being frightened and saying she was spending the night, she decided to go home. She decided, you know what? It's my house. I'm going home. So she went ahead and went back to her house that night. Now remember, this was about a week or two before she disappeared. So she changed her mind, she decided to leave, and she headed back home. Kelsey does believe that her mom was gonna go ahead and confront that neighbor. And Kelsey was not comfortable in the interview with, Tr with Trisha from Web Sleuths to give any more information than that about these neighbors and who they are and what, what it was about with this guy. Two months, Echo Lloyd hasn't used her cell phone, her credit cards, or even filled her prescriptions. Now her daughter is asking anyone with information to help find her. It's been nearly 55 days since anyone's seen Echo Lloyd. She's a, not just my mom, she's a best friend. The 48-year-old was last seen on Mother's Day in Edwards, Missouri. Her daughter, Kelsey Smith, says she would never lose contact. My mom did not just wander off. That something has happened to my mom, and it's time for us to figure out what it is. Benton County Sheriff Eric Knox says they need to find her. The FBI and Missouri Highway Patrol are assisting in the search. She's on several medications uh, that she does not have with her, nor does she have her uh, billfold or her car. Um, she is absolutely missing without a trace. Both Smith and Knox are asking the public to come forward with tips about what could have happened to Echo. I need people to listen and help get her face out there. I need someone brave to be able to step forward because somebody knows what happened to my mom. Somebody somewhere knows something and we need that person or those people to step forward and, and help us out you know, to give closure to this family. Smith says she feels helpless and her mother could be anywhere. We need all the help we can get from whoever, whatever group. Bring your dogs, bring your plates, bring your boats, bring whatever you can, bring your people. There's so much land out here.
She says she won't give up until she finds Echo and brings her home. I will never stop fighting for her. I will never stop being her voice. I will not stop until she is home. If you'd like to submit a tip in this case, we'll have information on our website about how you can do that. You can on May 9th, Kelsey spoke on the phone with her mom, and Echo also spent time with her two best friends. So this would be the day before Mother's Day, May 9th. Kelsey felt like her mom was pushing her not to come over on Mother's Day for some reason, and Kelsey really couldn't figure out why, but she said she really didn't want her to come over, and she tried to call her, she didn't answer the phone, so she went, over to, she went ahead over to her mom's house, dropped off flowers and a card on the front porch. The car was not there when she stopped in on Mother's Day, and Kelsey did not have keys to her mother's house. One of um, Echo's friends did claim to receive a text from Echo that day, Mother's Day, that said Happy Mother's Day to her, and the next day, um, Kelsey called her mom, and the call went to voicemail. She called the house phone. She spent all week trying to get a hold of her mom, Echo, and five days later, she said, that's it. I'm going over there. She found a, re she found a receipt from Walmart that was dated May 10th, which would have been Mother's Day, and Echo's handwriting was actually on this receipt. There was also a text from a neighbor friend. Now, this person went to Walmart with Echo, this neighbor friend, who I am assuming is this one that was taking over her keys and car and house. Um, this neighbor friend did go to Walmart with Echo on the 10th, that day where that receipt would have came from. This person often, I guess, would take Echo's car just to use for himself. Doing this again. So everybody bear with me. It has been six months and 10 days since I've reported my mom, Echo Lloyd, missing. I'm sorry. She is 48 years young, brown hair, brown eyes, five foot four, about 110 pounds or so, beautiful smile. Bear with me. <clears throat> okay, she went missing the week of Mother's Day. Thanks, I love you. Um, she went missing the week of Mother's Day this year. I reported her missing May 15th. There is nothing new in the case right now. She's still just a missing person. There is no body, no evidence, um, you know, um, for anything to be seen as otherwise. Um, so I'm out uh, doing a little shopping and I've been so thankful um, and so happy um, about tomorrow because I'm so blessed to have the family I do. Um, and I just want to let you guys in on mom and what, what I'm missing, excuse me, and what we're missing. I have napkins somewhere. There they are. I have napkins this time. So my mom tends to be one of those people, not tends to be, is who you have to kind of plan, um, like an hour two hour difference to make sure she's on time. So let's say the party starts um, at two. You wanna tell her it starts at noon to make sure she gets there on time. So 
something I'm missing this year. As silly as this is. I'm missing out on being able to giggle with my family and my siblings and my granny about how we've all had to work the day around her getting ready because mama getting ready is a process and she's beautiful no matter what but it doesn't matter what you say you know she's she's got her process of getting ready and so we're all missing that this year someone i'm so thankful but at the same time like someone has to know something i'm so angry that somebody knows something somewhere about who took my mom such a beautiful and amazing person and I'm not the only one missing out this year you know we all are collectively as a family and I'm so these updates are so hard on me because I don't really have much to update and I want to do so much I really do you know, and you just, you don't know what to do at the same time. Um, so it's, it's deer season, um, hunting season. Um, so I know like trying to go out collectively, maybe as a group, um, is not possible right now, but I've thought about, you know, doing bigger searches and things like that. There's just gotta be more, you guys, there's gotta be something something that I'm missing something that we're missing somewhere because she didn't just disappear out of thin air like it appears she did and she's missing her babies I mean somebody took away her being able to spend Mine and my my brother's and sister-in-law's babies first, you know. She's missing out on that. We're missing out on that. And our babies are missing out on her. So I just, everybody please keep sharing her. I'm sorry, guys her information, share her photos, share her posters on here. Sorry, I don't have a poster to hold up right now. Cause like I said, I've been out. Um, and I just felt like I needed to go ahead and just put out an update. So please, please, whoever might know something out there, be brave, be courageous. Even if it's only for five seconds, or five minutes, you'll be helping a whole family out, you know, and you can stay anonymous. You can call Benton County Sheriff's Department. You can call Missouri State Highway Patrol. You can call Missing Persons Clearinghouse. Um, and I will make sure to put those phone numbers down in the comments. I don't have them right offhand. So everybody just keep your eyes, keep your ears open. Hunters. Anyone who goes out and hunts, especially around Camden or Benton County, please keep your eyes open to anything that may appear out of the ordinary. You never know what you could, you know, be stumbling upon. You know, don't, of course, if you find anything, please back off. Please call the State Highway Patrol as soon as possible. Just call 911 and let them deal with the situation. But please keep your eyes open and your eyes peeled for her. You guys are all out there um, in all that timber. Um, and you guys could be maybe our best bet if she could possibly be out there um, somewhere. Um, we love you. 
I want to thank you guys. Um, and again, just whoever may know what's happened to my mom, please, please come forward. I hope that everybody does have a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. So that day she went to her mom's house and she looked all around and then she decided to go check on the neighbor's house. This is five days after she hasn't been able to get a hold of her mom. They wouldn't come to the door. Kelsey started yelling and threatening to call the police and getting really upset if they didn't answer and saying, my, my mom, are you in there? Is my mom in there? Mom, are you in there? So they finally came to the door. They said they had not seen Echo. And they asked, and Kelsey asked, do you have my mom's keys? And they said, no. She took the keys and she said she wanted to be alone. So Kelsey suspected that these keys Neighbors were a little boundaryless, and they were the kind of people that would just, from what Echo had told Kelsey, these neighbors were the kind of the people that would just walk in the house unannounced, just walk in your house, had no boundaries, didn't care about your own personal boundaries. They thought your house, Misa Casa, Su Casa kind of thing is what I'm getting from this description of these people. So after she met with the neighbors and they said, we don't know where she is, we don't have her keys, we don't have nothing. Kelsey went back to her mother's and she got in her mother's house through a window. And she said the house seemed out of sorts. The house was not the same. She said her mom is normally a totally clean freak, OCD person, and it was not clean like it normally would be. She went in her mom's room and her mom's cigarettes were on the nightstand and her purse was under the nightstand where she usually keeps it. The car was there, the keys were not there. There was no missing makeup, no missing clothing, no missing duffel bag or suitcase, basically nothing missing except her medications were missing that she takes on a daily basis. And she did say these are the kind of medications that someone may want to steal. Her cell phone was gone and the house phone was disconnected. Kelsey decided to call the police then. They arrived and the investigation began. She really feels that someone abducted her mother. She was there that day for about six hours, and the next day they did a search on foot, and they felt that she didn't, the law enforcement said they feel that she did not go missing from her own property. So there was supposed to be a dog search that was called off because they felt that this person, that Echo did not go missing from her own yard home. Family has done their own search. And Kelsey feels that the police are trying. She feels law enforcement is trying. She's not holding anything against them, saying that they're not working on the case. She said the state police are involved. Now, she did mention in her interview with Trisha that Texas EquiSearch to Miller will be coming up to assist with the search. They don't have the exact details or the exact date, but they have committed to coming up for the search of Echo. And they confirmed that they will be there. So that's great news. She asked if she knows if there was a video from the Walmart. And as far as Kelsey says, there's no video from the footage at Walmart, but that could, that could just be law enforcement keeping that under wraps. The last public sighting was noted to be Echo, either that day or the day before at Dollar General. Now, Gray Hughes did call the Dollar General store in the area and confirmed that it was the one in Crystal Springs. Um, they confirmed that she was there. So the way that the property is described, it's described as if it's a lot of land, like miles and miles of land or foresty land. We can look at it on the Google Maps. Um, in posts, there's also mention of a gun that belongs to Echo. She did have a concealed carry permit and a gun. And there is mention in the post on social media that this gun was found somewhere outdoors. Now, there's also some talk, and I don't know how accurate this is, that law enforcement was not happy about this information being released because I guess it was maybe something that, that they wanted to keep under wraps, that the gun was found outdoors. Um, 
And Trisha does bring that up, and Kelsey does say she can't talk about that or doesn't want to talk about that particular subject. Um, so we don't really have any details about where this gun might have been found, if there really was a gun, and what it, why it would be outdoors versus being in the house where it would belong. Very interesting. Trisha asks her more about security cameras, and it sounds like the house she lives in is very remote, and there wouldn't be a lot of neighborhood cameras or any, if any, that would pick up anything or see anything in that area. The police have questioned the neighbors, including Mr. No Boundaries. He has been questioned. We don't know if there's any suspect or if there's a person of interest or if they seem to know anything or if law enforcement feels like they're involved. None of that has been made clear. Now, I find it really interesting, this neighbor, interesting that there was a point where Echo was frightened and actually left her home to go stay at her daughter's and said this neighbor was a little too aggressive. I find that really interesting and I would really like to know more about this person and why Echo was frightened of them and why she was giving them her keys in her car. Little bit suspicious right there. That one really makes me a little bit like, hold on, what's going on? Now, I have a couple of ideas and theories, and I think that there possibly might have been an altercation or an argument between Echo and that boundaryless neighbor, neighbor on the day they went to Walmart, which would have been Mother's Day, May 10th, and maybe something went on and he did something to Echo. If Echo had unlocked the house to get the gun after everything was over, whoever did it could have just relocked the house with gloves on or... You know, there's a huge wooded area near there. In my mind, there really may have been something that went on after that trip to Walmart. And remember, two weeks before, she was frightened of this neighbor. Then to be seen the last day she was ever seen or heard from was on a Walmart trip with the same neighbor. And why did these neighbors hesitate to come to the door? And with the daughter saying that the house was out of sorts and she kind of listed things when she's talking to her like my mom doesn't leave dishes in the sink she doesn't leave, leave trash getting full were did this person or someone make themselves at home in echo's house after echo was gotten rid of taken care of i don't know or was it just a regular random abduction where they came in and they got her and then they made themselves at home for a while you know her money was there but her medicine's gone which is interesting you know it could have been somebody that was looking for drugs um i don't know what these medicines are but trisha does ask her if they are medications that somebody would want so i'm thinking pain medications or medical uh prescribed medical marijuana Something like that. Like, what is this medication that she had that she would need to take that other people may want? You know, the kind of medication that... Thank you that to all of you that have supported my show. Please consider becoming a Left Undone Patreon. You can help fund the show and keep it going. A small monthly donation of $3 or whatever you're comfortable with can help tremendously with the expense of providing the podcast. Please visit Patreon on the link in the show notes or go to patreon.com slash left undone to join. Thank you. So to review, Echo went to her daughter Kelsey's a week or two before she disappeared, upset and frightened about the neighbor that was boundaryless, taking over her house, her car, her keys, was upset about it. They had emotional conversation. They decided to, to go meet with this person the next day. Echo changes her mind, decides to go home early, goes home that night. Kelsey believes her mom was going to confront this person. Then, fast forward, Mother's Day. She's out and about to Walmart with this person. Kelsey comes by, car's gone, leaves the flowers. Doesn't get a hold of her mother for the rest of the week. And then it goes there, car's back goes and confronts the neighbors, trying to see if her mother's there. Her mother's not there. They hesitate to come to the door. And then she goes back to her mother's house, crawls in a window that's a little bit open, and finds the house is not in the normal way she would expect. And the mom's cigarettes are there. Her 
purse is there, her keys are gone, and her medication's gone, but everything else is there, including the car. If the only other person that has access to this woman's house has the keys, they could have made another set of keys, they could have gone in when she's not expecting them, and it sounds like there was something a little bit turmoil going on between this neighbor and Echo. So they very possibly could have had an altercation on May 10th after Walmart. Maybe they were overstaying their welcome a little too much again. Maybe Echo asked them to leave. Maybe they got upset about this. We will continue to follow this story. I just wanted to get the basics of what I was able to dig up out there. And let's keep this going. Share this video where you can. I know that there were people in my chat asking for us to follow this story on this past Saturday, and I think it's just as important as any of these other missing people. She has some very suspicious things going on, and obviously, I think, in my opinion, you know, there's a lot of important details here that need to be shared, need to get a little pressure going, need to watch the neighborhood, the people, the neighbor in particular, and I do not know this person's name, and if I did, I wouldn't say it anyways because they haven't been named a suspect, but it does sound very suspicious and very unusual to me that there would have been a disappearance and the fact that she was uncomfortable with these people or this person makes me very interested in knowing who they are, what happened. So let's keep this story alive. Let's help where we can. Thank you for watching Left Undone, Incomplete Investigations. I'm Catherine. Please like, please subscribe, please ring the bell for notifications. And I will see you on Saturday. And please share this video where you can. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.